Hello guys, we got a different kind of video for y'all to enjoy today. This is an HP Pro Book. Why are there Q-tips in my hand? Well, we also have some other guest supplies such as disinfecting wipes, antibacterial cleaner, isopropyl alcohol, and paper towels and a microfiber cloth. Probably seeing the outside of this and going, well, there's just a dirt spot on it. That's about it. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, you wait until we open it. Oh, yeah. That is most certainly clean to me. So this computer has some writing and stuff on it. It's quite gross, but why we're going to be trying to save this one in this video today is it does indeed power on. We can take a look at the maybe we can take a look at the system information of this one now i have a ton of these computers i have one that i use uh daily um for now uh, i got a new zbook studio um but yeah i use these pro books you can see it's got 8 gigs of ram i5 7200 used it's, it's, it's a nice laptop 1080p screen so it just needs a little bit of a cleaning so we're gonna see what we can do to it the first thing we're gonna start with some paper towel and disinfecting wipes to just go over the home rest and keyboard area. Let me slide this keyboard out of the way. Maybe I got a bit more room now. So we're going to take a look down here. You can see what I'm doing. Um, we're going to get this area up fully cleaned up. Um, so I'll probably split here in a moment and do a time lapse of it and I'll come back if I have any problems or anything to discuss. Um, basically anything like this down the bottom corner should just rub off. Let's see if that's true. Oh yeah, it's like off. You can see that. Um, but we are going to have to get it to the party alcohol, so. Alright, keep the time lapse cleaning everything. Okay, okay. so... I might actually have to switch back to the natural cleaner. Uh, even though I don't want to use too much spray cleaner, I think this might power through some of this a little more. Um, as a lot of this stuff is pretty well gunked on there, and we just need to get into those. Where's the perk? Let's set those out to go into the machine. There you go. There's a clean touch pad. Boom. That looks much better. So let's see if I can work at the stains on the bottom corner. And I think what would be really helpful for you getting that off is a magic eraser. So I'm going to go find one of those. And I think that'll be able to get that off better. And any of this leftover residue on the trackpad. Okay, so I got myself a magic eraser. Let's see if this comes off easier. Oh yeah, easy. Looks like new down there though. It's spotless. Let me see if it can do that touchpad too. I don't want to be too abrasive with anything, but... Oh yeah, perfect. If we need any tough stands off. That seems to work fine. So let's continue at the rest of this with our disinfecting wipe and paper towel trick and see how far we can get. So this keyboard's gonna take a very long time. You can see where I've scrubbed at it and there's like a physical amount of dirt on top of this keyboard. That is just absolutely preventing it from coming clean. So uh, let's continue working at it and see what I can do here.
There you go, that is a nice and clean keyboard restoration on that. So now let's turn our attention to the rest of the palm rest with these dirty marks and everything around it. I don't know how well the camera picks them up, but they sure are nasty in person. So we're going to go ahead and clean all of that up. Okay, so now that the base of the machine looks good, let's work our way up to the display. So, this is what I actually have the alcohol for, and that rag you haven't seen me use yet. Um, you're going to take this, and you're going to want to fold it in half, and then you can pour your alcohol onto it. Preferably and like uh, like ball it up a little bit and kind of get like an, an area that you're gonna scrub with. Get a good amount on there, wet it down, and then kind of take it and just wipe your display off. Now this one isn't as bad as I thought. That's why I grabbed the cotton swabs. It's to go in the corners of the display, but it doesn't appear to be that bad. There we go screen looks brand new. Go ahead and dry this off. And then we'll work our way up to the top. There's still some stuff on here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get all that off. So let's worry about the top now. So the top, there's nothing sensitive up here. So in all reality, you can just spray this with the method or whatever your choice is of cleaner when you use bleach on this. Make sure I didn't get overspray on my editing monitor or anything. And then take your magic eraser just face down and just kind of There should be any white scratches or anything out of here too. Then you gotta start scuffing things, it should go away. Work this out a little more here. I think that says there's a toxin in that. You can clean that up pretty easily. Um, I'm going to wipe this down. And there's a copy you can do. Now there's one more thing that we have to sort out, and that's when you power this on, you would expect Windows to boot. Currently, it just restarts, right? So we're going to need a install of Windows and a drive. Well, you might ask, well, where are you going to get a hard drive from? Well, I have a bunch of them. It's just, we have to make sure we have a caddy in this, otherwise this thing will be sent off without a drive. So if you flip this guy over, under here is our hard drive area. We get the cleaners and stuff off the table. Open up my iFixit kit. Should just be a Phillips head, yep. And we can just pop this off. And there is a hard drive adapter in here. So let's get a hard drive to put in. I 
have some smaller ones towards the... Here's one that's even HP part numbered. 320 gig hard drive. It's enough to get the computer up and running. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I got a bigger drive. I know I do. But don't mind getting rid of. A lot of these are terabytes if I have, and I don't want to stick that in here. Broken SSD. Ah, there's a 500. Okay, sorry that took a minute, but we do have a SSHD 500 gig, uh, it's a 98% drive, but that was about a year ago, this one's probably fine, uh, if I still have it, it's good enough to do the trick, I'm gonna just tuck in there, because I don't have a caddy, that's fine, you don't really need a caddy for these hard drives, and this computer, it'll keep itself in place, just snap this down and in, I'm going snap that in, and then we should be good to get a charging cord and get Windows installed. And I'll be back when Windows is done installing. So I've got Windows 11 installed, and it's moving quite quick, but there's only one issue. And the fact that, yeah, that's happening. So there's a few keys that don't work or, and are stuck. So I think I'm going to try and wash the keyboard. Um, yeah, it sounds weird, but actually if you wash it, I'll probably put it in the tub with some warm water and soap. And sometimes that'll work um, to get it going. But other than that, this computer is in mint shape. So I'll get back to you when that keyboard's done drying. And then we'll put it back together and I'll have it listed and linked in the description. So we get the keyboard off of the bottom of this thing. You're going to need your toolkit out again. We have the trusty iFixit kit. And we're going to go ahead and remove this bottom panel here. Should just come off. And then underneath there should be a keyboard screw. Which you can take right out. I normally like to use the top of my iFixit kit to hold all the screws. So then, if we flip the computer back over, one side, get your little pry tool here, the flat pry tool. Just remind us I'm going to cut it. And just stick it down here. And kind of. There should only be one screw in here. I've been poking at this thing. Um, I'm not seeing a... Oh, there's the second keyboard screw. Um, oh, there's two screws for the keyboard in this HP. Now we should be able to remove the keyboard off of there. And as funny as it sounds, you just take it and you toss it in your bathtub or sink and just literally wash it. So sometimes these are easier to get at for me. We should just...
pop it up. There we go. Should hear it pop, and once you get that initial pop, it should just be easy to go along and just remove the clips. Okay, so here's the keyboard off. Now underneath this is backlit, so you do have some connectors to remove. There's a big flat one here, just pop up. And then there's your little clip right there for your backlight. And you can remove it. And there's some liquid underneath here still. Yeah, so it should be isopropyl alcohol. So I'll get all that cleaned up. Okay, so now we'll go give this keyboard a wash, just in the sink, and we'll see if I can get these keys to work again. If not, this computer might need a BIOS update. Well, if you can't tell it's another day. The keyboard's distracted, it's freezing cold, so I have a heater on. Um, Biff's did not fix the keyboard for this ProBook, so it is basically done. It just needs a replacement keyboard. Now, I'm also going to say something that I've learned. I will not be selling anything like this that you see in these videos because um, eBay has changed. So unless you're local around me and stuff, uh, I might sell some things like this. But um, eBay has changed their tax regulations and stuff. And I don't want to have to pay taxes on all the stuff I sell. So maybe I'll start doing it again. But for now, as is. So, <laughs> so thank you for watching. If you watched the whole thing, that's great. If not, I'm sure you were probably disappointed to skip to the end and see that I didn't actually get this fixed, but yeah, unfortunately, this half of the keyboard doesn't work, so. Sweet, well, thank you all for watching, hopefully I'll produce more videos soon, so. Sweet, I'll see you on the next one.